Hello and welcome to a new video on the Precision Blash YouTube channel that looks at some of the functionality that resides within the Omnia platform, but also some of the functionality that a lot of you are utilizing on farm on a yearly basis. So something that's quite topical at the moment is variable rate nitrogen applications. So today's video, I really want to harness how to create an application, how to drag through this satellite imagery, how to customize our application in case of any stud water, or any bare patches uh, that we want to manage ever so slightly differently. And by doing that, uh, hopefully I'll walk you through some of the, the platform's functionality. There will be areas that we touch on today that will go, well, how has he got to that section? Well, never fear. There is a range of content that I've recorded and that I will be uploading bit by bit so that we can ensure that you have uh, a seamless transition through each of the tabs on, uh, on the Omnia platform. So, to, you know, today's we'll look at predominantly the map layers and the nutrition tab and how to create those applications. We might even look at how to export an application just quickly um, because I think when we're exporting each farm is is different there will be different kit there will be different GPS languages that we need to use and different formats for our USBs or if you're utilizing the John Deere platform like a lot of people there is actually an API connection as well which means that we can send it directly to the tractor cab so Rather than touch on all of the export functionality, I just really would like to focus today's video on the creation and customization of a variable rate nitrogen application. So on that note, follow me through the process. I hope you enjoy and we'll catch you soon. So today, the first thing that I would like everybody to do is to follow me through the process whilst creating a variable rate nitrogen application. So first off, I'm going to go to my map layers. I want to ensure that first off that I'm dragging through the most recent imagery to utilize for my variable rate application. So I'm going to tap on the map layers to start off with. In the map layers, you'll see that uh, my layer type is showing fields. I'm going to switch this to actual layer types and you'll see that I have all of my other spatial data are available to me and you can also see that I have NDVI imagery there which is the imagery that we're going to be utilizing uh, for our variable rate of nitrogen so I do think there's probably going to be a fresher image a more recent image that we can use so I'm going to follow up to the imagery icon at the top here of my screen once I've got to this area of the platform click on imagery and it launches the satellite imagery platform. In here, down at the bottom left hand side of your screen, you'll see RGB. Now we need to switch this out for NDVR. Now that's the vegetation imagery. It's gonna give us an insight to the biomass of the crop, where the biomass is low, where the biomass is high. Now fundamentally what we're looking to achieve by looking at the biomass is areas that we can actually influence with our nitrogen application. So when the imagery actually uploads, and you can see here in the background that the image for the 26 is actually uploaded, and you can see some variation there, but this is in its raw format. So what I'm looking to do here is I'm looking to populate this and bring that through into my map layers. So if I manage the map layers down in the bottom left of the screen, click on this, I can select which fields I'm actually going to bring it through for. Now in, in this instance, I only need it for the oil seed, sorry, not for the oil seed rate, for the winter wheat. And so I'm only going to tick the winter weeds in that. If I click create layers on here, what that will then do is that will try and convert the raw data imagery that we're seeing here into a format that looks a little bit more like, let me just change this out. So this is a previous image that we've um, imported. Um, so if I change this slider right the way across, you'll see that some of the imagery starts to come through. 
Now, if we're looking at the, the imagery on this, on this particular date, we're doing a variable rate nitrogen application. Fundamentally, the principle of it all is, is that we're trying to promote tillering early doors. If we can promote tillering uh, in our first pass, stem extension in our second pass, uh, the, the risk of lodging has actually passed by that point after the first two applications. If we then decide that we want to carry on and push the low biomass areas to continue to even up the crop, then we can continue to utilize the, the imagery to do so, but we can also flip the model. So whereas we're pushing the backward areas to start off with, we can actually push the forward areas uh, by flipping the, the canopy model. So, and the reason we would do this further on in the season is just that it allows us to safeguard any yield, it allows us to safeguard proteins and push for, for, for proteins if we're growing milling varieties. But again, also, if after two applications the crop hasn't responded in those low biomass areas, there's a strong argument to say, look, let's flip the model and utilize it a different way. So this image is actually now populated, and to, to understand whether the image is actually populated, when we go to the date that we actually uh, looked at the most recent image, we can actually see these these three tiles. That indicates to me that that now resides in the map layers. So I can then go through to the map layers icon, which is at the top left of my screen. So go back to layers from the imagery, and then it takes us back into our overview screen of the farm. Down the bottom on the left hand side, you can see I've got a new date. Now that date here, I want to sense check. Now when I'm talking about sense checking the imagery, when we're looking at the biomass of the crop, the, the darker browns and the yellow areas are lower biomass and the green areas are the higher biomass. Now it's important to remember when we're actually applying our nitrogen to these fields, we're looking to do an average application. So in general, we're not going to use any more nitrogen and we're not going to use any less nitrogen than we would if we were doing a flat rate. In fact, we're actually going to be, it's going to look as if we're robbing Peter to pay Paul and we're going to rob from the, the, the lush biomass areas some of that nitrogen application and, and place it on the areas that need it the most. So it's targeting our input smarter, which makes sense to me because it's going to give the crop a, a better chance of, of evening up the, the tillery. Okay, so now that we've managed to achieve dragging through that satellite imagery the next step is actually to create an, a nitrogen plan now this is done in the nutrition tab on the left hand side so if we go to the nutrition tab and click on this what this will do is it will launch the actual recommendations that have been carried out by your fax advisor now in here what we can see is that we've got our soil nitrogen supply, our NMAX, uh, we've got our nitrogen recommendation which is based around our uh, fields cropping and the target yield that we're looking to, to achieve and what we're doing with the crop residue and also the sowing date of that particular crop as well. We can be variety specific in there if we need to. But in this instance, look, it's a, an overall recommendation of what that crop's requirement actually is based on what we've input in the fields tab. Now getting fields, the boundaries, the cropping, the grass margins, uh, getting all of those correct is paramount. I have got another video for that, so do please check that out on my YouTube channel. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if, if you are. Uh, do appreciate the, the content that I'm actually creating. It goes a long way to uh, pushing me to create more content for you all. Right, I digress. What we need to do now is we need to start to create our nitrogen application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the, to the, to the bottom of my screen uh, where I can see that I have winter wheat. Now all, all the fields are populated with a, with a recommendation based on the cropping that I've input. Uh, so what I want to do straight straightforward is just click on create a new plan. 
When I create new plan based on the, the way that I've laid out my nutrition tab using cards and you know, group by crop, it, it allows me to click on the actual card itself which means that I can drag through every single field that resides under that particular card. So in this instance, the fields that resided under the card are all of the winter weeds. So first job when we are creating our nitrogen application, let's start by inputting a title. So, so that we can always find and report on these things for our audits, be it EA, be it the uh, crop assurance, uh, farm assurance, uh, red tractor. It's, it's always useful at this point when we're inputting the the actual application name to, to populate it accordingly. So in this instance what I'm going to write is I'm going to put it as a winter wheat, I'm going to put it as my first pass of uh, nitrogen and I'm also going to put in here the, the target application rate which I'm going to put as nutri nutrient rather than product. So 50 kilos of N and I'm going to put the product in there as well. So if I use Nitram as my example. So that gives me something to identify which fields I've applied that first pass of Nitram on um, and how much has actually gone on. So a quick reference. I can then move over to the add application. Click on add application and in here, it's quite intuitive, you can actually type in whatever product, so if it's, um, uh, let's let's see, you've got Omex in here, you've got Yara products in here, Urea, um, you can see granular Urea in there, you can see obviously that by typing, uh, it is case sensitive, so it will find some of the products that actually reside in your stocks tab as well. So if you're utilizing manures, you can create manure plans as, as well in this area. But we're not doing that today. We're looking to use nitram and I can use ammonium sulfate or I can use the nitram. Uh, CF nitram is what I'll choose today. Now the next step is to assign a date. Now generally when we're planning, that's not generally the date that we're applying it but for some of us it is so let's just use the 7th of February uh, for this particular application now here we have when we look at the nutrition sorry the nutrient application what we have here is a percentage icon we have a kilos per hectare of nutrient and we also have a kilograms a hectare of product so if we're wanting to put on 50 kilos of N uh, in the nutrient application, I'm just going to apply my 50 kilos of N. Now what that does is it actually populates how many kilos a hectare of product that would be on average, which is 145 kilos, and it will also populate the quantity that is required for all of the crops that I have with, within my plan. So great stuff, we're in a position where we know how much uh, product we need for our application. Click OK on that, and that then locks in that plan. What we then need to do is to add in the biomass element. So where we see biomass next to fields, I want to click on biomass. In here, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to utilize and tick this use biomass layers. Now there's a couple of things that I want to talk about in this area. Uh, first off is the calculation mode. Automatic calculation mode gives us a field average roughly of what we wanted to target in the first place. So 50 kilos of, of N across the field, it will average that across the field. Um, using the automatic calculation mode though, it gives us a buffer either side of that application rate. And that, that would generally look similar to maybe 20% either side of the application rate. That gives us a, a bigger window of opportunity to influence those low biomass areas for more tillery. So again, what I'm also going to do prior to moving through my application, I'll just touch on the manual element. If we're using liquid um, and we have a set range with our nozzles, it's in here, either in nutrient or in product that I would set my floor and I would set my ceiling either side of my base rate that would then give me the ability to stay within the range of my nozzles and keep the pressure and flow correct when I'm moving across the field. 
but generally because I'm using a, a granular product I'm going to utilize the automatic mode zone rounding is giving me the ability to to round my zones down to you know one kilogram a hectare what this does is it drags through quite a lot of variation so five is actually quite good but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that down to one so that we can actually show you significant variation when I bring it through so calculation mode and zone rounding I've covered low biomass now you've got two options here this is just how we want to treat that low biomass so in the first instance high nitrogen on the low biomass will help us promote tillering and stem extension and reduce the risk of lodging in the first two passes so this is the option and the model that I would probably choose for my first two passes if I'm doing extra passes over and above that what I would look to do is I would look to flip the model and put low nitrogen on the low biomass areas therefore pushing those higher biomass areas safeguarding my yield after the risk of lodging has passed so it's a really useful tool is this because if the nitrogen uptake uh, and the, the crop hasn't responded to that nitrogen uptake we can flip that model and customize it to exactly how you're wanting to treat that for those of you that are ex soil or current soil um, customers that are looking to utilize variable rate nitrogen on a different platform you'll see that high nitrogen here would probably be the field average model and the low nitrogen would be the field average reverse okay swiftly moving on so now that we've uh, populated our plan we need to populate the imagery that we dragged through earlier on in the video so in here what I'm doing is uh, I've got my fields I've also got the imagery here and I'm just going to select the most recent image for each individual field now it might come to fruition that the imagery that you have uh, for say the 26th of the first misses out one of your fields one of the limitations for satellite imagery always has been and always will be cloud cover now what we can actually do with 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 this is potentially look to use a, a separate image or alternatively if there isn't an actual viable image for that particular field we either miss it out or we can actually populate that with the 50 kilos of N that we wanted as a flat rate. Therefore, we've covered all our applications in one pass and we can report on it if we, if we need to as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna click on this create button. That then will send me back to my nutrition tab and there will be a tile that resides in the background that represents this particular application that we've created. Now I'm just waiting for my computer to catch up. You will now see this little tile here resides on the, on the card that we have for winter wheat. And if I hover my mouse over it, it tells me what that application is. Now I can go back into that application if needs be to, to update it, if just in case we have a new viable image and we want to add that particular image to it and then update that and recalculate my applications. The next stage, having done this, means that we can actually export it to, a, to the tractor if needs be. But actually I'd like to uh, just visit some of the sense checking because in a year like this year where the there's a lot of stud water out there, there's, there's bare areas of land. What I want to do is to show you how to customize one of your plans so that you can remove any areas of, of stud water, for example, because that, that's demonstrating farmers' uh, best practice, that's, that's good agricultural practice, and that's exactly what these auditors are looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to where it says map now that I've created that application on this map you'll see obviously requirements in there um, requirements is based at the top here I want this little plans tab here now some of this is looks to be like it's hidden functionality 
And it's not meant to be in that that format, uh, so that we're hiding things from you. What it what it does is it gives us the ability to utilize certain functionality. But that said, this is exactly why I'm doing one of these videos for you so that I can help you to understand the platform a little bit better. Now that I'm on this plans tab, if we click on this winter wheat pass, which is the one that we actually created, what that will do is it brings up the actual variation that I've managed to create utilizing the, the nutrition tab and the satellite imagery. So I can see the variation across that field. So if we're looking at this bottom corner and we're thinking that this 154 application rate is incorrect, we don't really want to apply to that particular area. It might be stood water, it might be that there's no crop there. It might be that we just want to reduce the rate in that particular area because historically, we know that that area doesn't really respond to nitrogen applications, but it's been flagged as a low biomass area and given the model that we've chosen, it's choosing to put a lot of nitrogen on there. So how do we influence that? Click on that particular area and it'll highlight it. If we then move across to the highlighted uh, area across on the right hand side, we can see that we've got an arrow and when I hover over that arrow, you'll see another arrow appear. So if I move to that arrow now and click on that, it opens up an editable uh, platform. So if I click edit on here, I can then scroll to where I see that highlighted rate and I can then click in that box and influence the rate that I want to apply in that area. So that when we do export this, it not only records that we've changed the rate to a zero rate, but it has also um, taken that out and recalculated the field average so that we're not affecting any of the other rates. But it also then means that we're exporting it in the correct format for the, for the tractor. So that when the tractor drives over this particular area, Utilizing the GPS in the tractor, this, it then turns the spreader off or adjusts the rate according to what we've adjusted it to so that when we go through the area, it's applying the correct rate. That to me is good agricultural practice. And I think we all should be doing that in a year like this, especially given the, the weather that we've had and the, the establishments that we're seeing on farm. So that's just how we managed to um, customize each application. Now bear in mind, this level of customization, being able to click on any particular area across the, our application plan, uh, we can actually customize any application. So when I'm talking about seed, when I'm talking about potash, nitrogen, uh, PGRs, uh, the, the, the possibilities are endless. So this level of functionality is actually really useful for you guys on farm, and I hope you like it. Okay. So now I'm saving this particular application. And once I've saved that particular application, I'm going to move through to actually exporting it on the tractor. So first things first, we need to go to our data. We need to go to the export button. And in here, if we haven't already got a shortcut created for our designated GPS terminal, what we can do is go up into the top left, uh, click on manage exports, and in here you can choose your provider. Uh, when you click on your provider, for example, uh, you, you will see that the, there are certain options for different terminals, and the terminals that are highlighted would then come through. So um, we don't necessarily need to do that on this particular one. And I'll probably touch on doing a full export video in a, in a different section. But just quickly, if we were doing a, a, a Green Star uh, export, I'd just look to click on export plans. I would click on the plan type, drop down to nutrition, which is where my nitrogen plans reside. Click in the available plans and select the plans that I want. You can see that the area that I removed is, is quite prominent. Um, so we know that we've sense checked our, our imagery and actually in a position to export it. Once I click on export, you'll see it up here on the, on the right hand side. 
it's in a downloadable format when we click on this button and that will then give us the ability to download it to our computer and onto the USB stick. Now for getting the format correct for each individual platform, that can be quite a task. Always talk to your, to your Omnia advisor just to make sure that you're exporting it in the correct format. For any support and, and guidance, they'll help you through that particular section. Um, what, it, what is also just something that I wanted to touch on, if you haven't already downloaded the Omnia Scout app, then by all means, this is something that I would urge you to do because within that app, again, there will be another video coming live soon. This is something that will help us to sense check some of the imagery that we dragged through. So if we dragged through that image, say a couple of days ago, and wanted to sense check it today, we could go out to the field, open up the app, and actually walk to the designated areas of low biomass just to understand whether we want to actually influence that with further nitrogen or whether we want to manage it slightly different. So there we have it. Finally, we have managed to customize and create our own bespoke variable rate nitrogen application. Now, some of the tools are absolutely brilliant to help us to customize, uh, especially in a year like this year where there's plenty of stud water, there's plenty of bare patches, plenty of failed areas that, that we actually, you know, if, if we're thinking about this, we can actually save some money on nitrogen on those particular areas because, you know, if we're looking at farmer's best practice or good agricultural practice as such, then potentially we need to be managing those areas a little bit smarter than what we, have, we are. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I really hope you like and subscribe to the channel. There are more videos coming, uh, definitely with regards to um, creating nutrient plans, creating manure management plans, NVZ risk maps, uh, boundaries, SFI. There's a whole range of videos that I've, I've targeted myself to to record and actually upload for you guys this year and I think hopefully you all will find some value in in the videos that we're uploading but until then I um, hope this video has helped if you have any questions feel free to reach out and I'll leave my email address in the link and in the description below and off we go